Hello everyone and welcome back to day 11 of Bitwise where we code uh, and implement a complete software hardware stack from scratch for a simple computer. Um, yesterday we got a, a ton of work done on the C code generator. On the mainstream um, we mainly focused on generating C declarations from, um, from ion types and uh, basically finish that off. Um, but then we continued, uh, at least some of us continued on the extra stream for several more hours where we basically did, um, you know, I wouldn't, not, not, not the complete C code generator because there's a lot more work that needs to be done, but at least some kind of end-to-end -end code generation where we could take an ion source file and generate the corresponding C code and everything is in the right order and, and parses correctly and so on. Um, and so since I don't want, again, I never want to assume that um, that people spent the extra time to watch the the, the extra uh, the extra stream. I'm going to do a quick review of that code, not line by line uh, because it's fairly repetitive, but just kind of uh, mentioning the high points and some unanswered questions and giving a demo of that. So um, yeah, on, on the main stream where we left off is we basically had I think it was this function here, type to C decal, which is a recursive function that ultimately returns a um, a C declaration given a, well, from the outside perspective, given a, you know, like a variable name or a type def name uh, in stir and then in an ion type in this type variable. Uh, and so we, we, we finished that off, um, may still have some edge case bugs, but at least handled some of the torture tests we threw at it. Uh, and then in the extra stream, we just kind of dove in and did, um, did the actual C code generation, not just for the declarations, but really for everything. So let me just first give a demo of that. So uh, here we have a, a small program that has you know, various functions, uh, function definitions and type definitions, and um, some stuff if deft out. And some of this requires, you know, like this stuff down here, requires the order resolution in order to compile to C correctly, because um, you know, this thing here, uh, this P variable, can work with only an incomplete for declaration of T, whereas this here, um, this here has to be after P in the, in the C code. Uh, and ultimately this, yeah, so something like that. So anyways, so there's some dependencies on resolving the right order here for this to work in C and we do all that. So anyway, um, when you call this general function, uh, this is what we get. And so right now we're just printfing it, but we get a bunch of forward declaration corresponding to functions and uh, union and struct types, just incomplete forward declarations. And then we have the actual ordered declarations in the resolved order. Um, and that's all, you know, that all works. Um, and then if you, you know, I, I just have this thing down here where I'm pasting it. Um, and so if I enable that, call one of the functions uh, you will see so I'm calling this example test function example test is just like an, a top level entry point it calls the uh, a recursive factorial function and an iterative factorial function which we've defined down here and it just verifies that they return the same result I'm just doing it for the value 10 but you know you could use other values obviously and so if we now run this um, you can see at the end example test returned one which means that those two uh, alternate implementations of a factorial give the same result. So anyway, uh, that's kind of where we ended up in terms of the outcome. In terms of how the code works, um, it's mostly straightforward. Um, like, uh, you know, th there's there's this thing here which generates all the four declarations. And so just for structure and function, it generates these declarations. Uh, and then having done that, it goes through um, Gen sim, it goes through and does the ordered declarations for everything really. So right now, uh, constants are done using uh, anonymous enums um, so that they can be used in array bounds. So for example, if you look at this code down here, um, this const n is used in the array bounds for this field here. And so this this either we would have to either make n an anonymous enum or we would have to make it like a pound define in order for it to be able to be used here. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, you can see that down here in the code. Uh, an anonymous enum. 
if, if we had done this instead, I mean, I can demonstrate it. Some people ask, so this is a, a point that's worth making maybe. Um, obviously, well, I don't know if it's obvious, but um, you can see it won't accept that in the array bounds because and, and even if we make it static constant or whatever, but none of these, despite this const qualifier, this is n itself is not a constant expression. So that's why we're using these enums. Um, and we, we, you know, we could have done this. Uh, we could have done this as well. That would have worked. Well, if we parenthesize it properly, that would have worked. Um, but this is, you know, this minimizes the use of preprocessor constants. But anyway, so that's the motivation for using the enums. Some people were asking about this. So just wanted to clarify. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, we go through those different cases. Um, and generate stuff accordingly. Uh, most of the work really happens in, inside, well, dit, dit down, downstream from this genfunc function, which generates the function declaration and then generates the statement block for the body. And, you know, it's, we've already done a bunch of these kind of AST walkers, right? That does some sort of case analysis on the, um, why is there two versions here? Oh. Let me see for declaration. I don't know why it wants to show that separately. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's the same kind of thing here. We do a case analysis and we generate the right code for it or try to generate it. Let's hope we didn't make any mistakes. There probably are still some, uh, some, some cases where we're not parenthesizing sufficiently. But most of this code is pretty straightforward. Um, it's really, you know, when we did the, if you remember, we, we did an AST printer um, that prints as expressions. This is, this is a simpler case of what we're doing here. Um, in many ways, conceptually the same, but now we're generating C code. And so that was kind of an, an intentional for, aside from this being useful in its own right, that was an intentional foreshadowing of what we're doing here. Um, and um, I guess one note is that, one note is that for expressions, uh, in order to avoid for, for now dealing with the exact precedence uh, and associativity of C, we're kind of over parenthesizing everything just to be very explicit about um, but very explicit about that uh, longer term to generate kind of more natural code you can do some simple things to uh, to remove all the redundant parentheses like basically anytime you're trying if you, if you insert for example if 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 you're um, suppose you've already generated a times b and or, you know suppose you you've already generated the left sub expression and the right sub expression and now you want to do a plus here um, you can basically see what operator is the left thing, and if it has higher precedence than plus, then we don't need to parenthesize the left part. And similarly here, and and for associativity, you can do the same kind of deal. Like you look, is the operator to in the left part uh, of the same type as me, and does it match the associativity of what I want to generate? Then you don't need to insert extra parentheses. So we'll do that eventually, but for now we just um, do something that's more context independent, where we just parenthesize everything. Uh, to the hilt, and uh, it means that the generated code is, uh, is 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 you know it's it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but um, hopefully uh, free of those bugs. Um, I mean, and you see this here in the type declarations as well. We could also and will eventually clean up these so that we don't have these redundant parentheses. But especially in type declarations, it's kind of convenient because the syntax here is otherwise a little bit complex. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's kind of where we got to yesterday. And my plan for today was, so um, let's see, my plan for today, as the as the title says, is basically to work on an end-to-end -end workflow. So for now, uh, I think this has been great. We've just been using these kind of inline unit tests where we just have C strings and it's very kind of very integrated and malleable and and so on. Um, but already for this stuff yesterday, it would have been nice to just have separate files probably. And it also means that um, by setting up a more, you know, standard file-based workflow where we can just invoke the compiler and say ion compile foo.ion and we get out a C file and maybe ion actually as a convenience also compiles it for us using the system C compiler. Um, having a workflow like that um, will also make it feel more like a real compiler, but it will also set up uh, set up the ability to do easier benchmarking and stuff like that. So for example, I want to, one of the things I want to do very soon is to generate some big synthetic workloads. 
um, some parameterized script that can generate different kinds of workloads to, to stress different parts of the compiler, and then use those to, uh, I mean, first have to check that it, it works, um, but also you know to, to test the performance and then use that to guide an optimization pass. Because there's a bunch of stuff we've been punting on. Like right now, we're still doing. Uh, there's still some cases where we didn't move to a faster allocation style, uh, and I, I, I know a bunch of places where there was some low-hanging fruit for optimization. And so, but before I, I there, there's not much point in optimizing that until we have proper workloads to stress it. And so, moving to a file-based workflow will enable that as well more easily. So that's the plan to start on that today and hopefully finish it. Uh, I plan to do an extra stream today as well since we lost some time this week. Um, but again, uh, don't feel compelled to watch it. It's basically just what I would be doing off stream, but I'm streaming it. So, all right. So um, I think ultimately what we want to end up with is, um, you know, something like ion compile file, file name, um, and probably also something like this. So we can still have a string-based workflow for embedded unit tests and, and this is a convenience. Um, and so ultimately we want to end up with this kind of API here. So um, that will, I mean, for now it will probably just be a replica of the kind of thing we're doing manually. But then we also have to make sure that we clean up all of these global data structures so that we can invoke this thing multiple times successively without leaving behind any weird state. Um, so let's just do that. Um, so I'm just going to create a, uh, an ion.c file. which is going to be, we're still going to have main.c. Main.c is going to continue being a very um, a very dumb file that really doesn't do much on its own. It just kind of weaves together everything. Um, but ion underscore will kind of be the top level API for, for doing stuff that's kind of intended to be externally used. Um, so I'm just gonna put that there. Um, Okay. Should make sure that gets excluded. Yeah. I mean, this is so stupid. I really. Okay, I can also do this, I guess. This is incredible. I can't believe they, they, they treat dot as a regex dot. I'm going to figure out how to disable that right now before I lose my, my sanity. Okay, because I'm not going to do that right now. But that's insane. All right. Um, right, so ion compile file. Um, so yeah, it's going to be something like this, and uh, like this as well. Path. Um, and so for now, without let, let's just get started. Let's actually let's do ion compile stir because that's kind of what we're already doing, I guess. Um, and so if you go to gen.c. Um, let's see, init stream stir. Um, init global sims. Um, parse file. All right. And then gen all. Let's make sure we don't have any buffer stuff left over. Which maybe gen all should do. It's probably a good thing gen all to do. Um, right now that would leak, but all of these things are going to be handled by sort of core scale allocators. Um, and so now gen buff should be there. And I guess, yeah, there's a question of where should this code go with a simple API. 
Um, so hmm. we might want to have something fancier later, but for now, let's just say that this thing actually just returns it. Um, like this um, because that way we can kind of use it the way we were using it even though that might not be the final API for compile file let's say that um, well I guess a, a lot of it is going to be the same I'm not gonna try to factor it out um, for now but um, let's see here fseek file zero fseek what's that thing called um, seek end and um Let's allocate a buffer. Actually, let's call the size. It's one plus to account for that. Um, this is a common. Um, let's see here. So, what's the other? What's the beginning called? Oh, set. The stupid asymmetry. Um, all right. Uh, X malloc it. I guess read it into the buffer. And I guess we're just going to read it. Okay, let's do this. Do it like that. Um, size one file. I mean, I should do something better than just returning. All, but for now, I'm just going to do this. You can check error now if you want. Um, I'm sure, if this can fail, I'm just going to pretend it can't fail. Uh, and then should return the number of elements read. Let's just see if that works. What happened here? Oh. What in the world is this? Ah. All right. Um, actually, let me uh, do a test for that first. Okay. 
Linux is not going to have the right working directory, I think. Right. No. That does look like the right working directory. Projects Ion. So maybe it's something else. Okay. The size is so. Okay, I guess I'm just forgetting value of that. Size of each object of bytes. Didn't this work correctly, I wonder? Um, Oh, because it's, I guess it's one past the position. God, I'm so used to 132 size, file size computation. Let me see here. So this was one past the end. Still feels. Um, So when you seek to the end, that's a, and, then, and then ask for the zero-based index, that's like the cursor off the end. So if the file has a single character and you seek to the end, that would be one, I think. So I don't... Um, I mean, I could do this, but... Feel uncomfortable. Must be something else. Oh no, it's way off. Oh, I just have to do it, in, I guess, in multiple. Uh, I'm just forgetting. I guess I can't do it in a single F read. Um, okay. Um, I should know this. This is embarrassing. All right. Um, well, not read. This less than size. 
Um, While size, footer one, um, buff, or a footer one size file. If this is um, let's see here. should be able to detect that just because I'm tracking how big the file is. So um, Um, so, so it did reach the file. What? Okay, I'm gonna look at chat because this is stupid. I don't wanna waste more time on it. Um. Oh, RB. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ugh, this is so dumb. Yes, that makes perfect sense. It's because it's doing the carriage return conversion. Okay, and it should be done in one pass. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. So let me explain what it was. And that, this is a, a noob mistake. But when you open something in text mode, then um, it's going to convert, you know, on Windows, the file encoding of, a, of like new lines are encoded as this. And, um, but it, it, the in memory representation, once you do an F read, is without the carriage return like this. And so basically, uh, FTEL is. Um, FTEL is basically going to be seeing the file as a stream of bytes, but FREAD is going to do this kind of decoding, so it's going to return a smaller size uh, than, than this would have. Oh, so Sean's saying it's actually some control character at the end of file, not the CRLF stuff. Anyway, this does work, um, but yeah, that's an embarrassing mistake. I sh I've, I've made that bug before, but I think, yeah, I don't know why. All right. Um, I probably should have done this loop for reading it anyway. Um, let me just force this to read like 16 characters at a time just to make sure that um, because we have otherwise yeah so that that does work okay yep yep okay alrighty alrighty so um, stupid stuff aside where were we all right so um, let's put something here. Um, 
ion compile file. Let's put an example file in there. Yeah, like the, the the reason I didn't do the loop first is that I, I actually can't remember what the C standard says about doing these iterative loops. Like I can't, I mean, in theory, it's allowed to return less than, it's allowed to not fill the buffer in. I think it also depends on stuff like, I mean, modern Unixes will handle system call restarts for you internally, but I bet this is the kind of thing where if you're on, if, if system call restarts are disabled, then the F read can return partially and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I'm just going to leave it for now, just so I don't have to w worry in the future. I think, I mean, yeah. But I, I mean, normally I would just do a big F read and not worry about it. And this does, I mean, it's not any slower. It doesn't do smaller reads that it needs to. But uh, if the API insists on returning things in smaller chunks, it should handle it. Um, all right, so uh, let's see here. Example one ion or test one ion. Hopefully it doesn't add it. Okay, good. Okay, so so Sean says it POSIX says upon successful completion, F read shall return the number of elements successfully read, which is less than n items only if a read error or a or end of file is encountered. All right. I mean, I'll I'll I'll, I'll simplify it to what I originally had then. Um, I'm going to read it as one item as well. We also have to zero terminate it, which I just realized. Yeah, seal seal's pretty nice. It uses doc sets from dash or something, some other thing. But like, it used to be that I could actually use MSDN, like the built-in, not the website, but the built-in MSDN for stuff like this. But this is pretty nice. Um, I've been using it a lot, so I don't have to use the web browser all the time. Um, alrighty, let's just make sure that still works. Um, let's just see what that did, if anything. Because the oh, so it didn't get it should obviously check that it's not called that, so that makes sense. Um, let's just have that for just while we're testing, let's just have that return the, the buffer as well. I'm going to keep the codes redundant, uh, keep the code redundantly for now just because that one of them is going to change. Um, okay, so that doesn't work. Let us see why. Test one dot ion. Let's 
I see. So that actually worked. Um, interesting. Oh, that's because it's zero length. Um, which I guess is fine. Like, if um, if size is zero or if it's non-zero, we'll just return the empty string. So that's fine. Fine by me. Okay. So that's just an empty set of declarations, which we hadn't actually tested that degenerate case, so that works. Let's move some stuff into that from our thing yesterday. Okay. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Uh, did, did, so, okay. Did it go back? It literally just rotated my screen. And I think OBS is thoroughly confused now. Hang on. Okay, now it looks like it's back. I used some kind of shortcut that literally did a full 90 degree rotation, not of the window as far as I can tell, because my mouse cursor motion was also inverted. Anyway, I have no idea what's happening. That was uh, interesting. Okay, here we go. I was trying to do a rectangular selection. But apparently that's like one modifier key away from completely rotating my display. That's insane. Um, See here. What's that? Push away. Now we can also let's do some better implementation. Oh, so someone's saying it's a weird Intel shortcut. Yeah, I should look into that. I've never had that happen before. I think it was Control Alt. Uh, it was Control Alt Left Arrow Key, but I was trying to do Shift Alt uh, Arrow Key to do rectangular selections. That's dangerously close to a pretty common shortcut. So thanks, Intel. You always make the best software. A plus. Okay. Okay, this thing is driving me nuts. Look at this. What kind of completion is this? <laughs> Someone's asking if there would be a syntax definition. I mean, I think a few people already did a basic syntax definition for Sublime and uh, Vim. Sure. 
should be pretty easy if you just need like lexing and stuff like that for, for basic keywords and whatnot. Um, all right, so now we're doing this. I guess um, for now, let's um, I guess let's do a write file. It would be nice if I knew the size of the buffer, wouldn't it? Um, having to write zero terminated data is kind of, eh, I mean, it's not a big deal. But might as well pass that in. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's see here. I guess for this, we do want to do it in text mode. And I think this here, I should also do F close. Um, See here, F. So what does this type mean? Um, buff len one file. Um, this is not equal to one. F close. Well, let's, let's put it like this. Let's try that. So, let's see here. Um, write file. Let's just call it crap dot text and Right star, other star, left, right star. Must have reversed files. All right. to work. Seriously. What were they smoking? What is this completion? I understand that it's doing it because of the dot, but still. Ion.c. Yeah, totally. I definitely want to go to this anonymous union. That's definitely exactly what I want. That's a great match. See, <laughs> look at this match. It matches the C at the beginning of the string and the... Uh. Okay, I'm just losing it now. I can't believe that's how they implemented that. It, I've been enjoying it so much, like that they finally added a, you know, text mater or a sublime style go to anything 
thing, but now the, the matching is just like, I don't know what the matching is doing. All right. Um, so for this stuff, um, let's just say, I mean, I don't know. I could. I mean, let's just do the. Oh, path. Is it max path? No, that. I guess that's not even. I never remember if this is POSIX or not. Uh, max path. Okay, I guess it's a. Can't even remember. Okay, um, let's do a dynamic allocation because I don't want to deal with that shit. So let's just take the existing one, like a scrub. Um, These things are throw away, but let's just do it. Um, Super, super shitty. Okay, and then let's do let's do a test. Some award-winning test coverage. I'm going to say that works. Um, and then I guess replace exp. Just going to do it. Well, let's see here. Um, Uh, we get the extension, and then if we don't get that, then we don't return anything. Otherwise, um, we do this, plus, let's see, plus one for the string terminator, plus two. This is a little bit too magic numbery, but um, sorry, other way around. And then, and then copy new path from path. Uh, what 
and we'll say this is like face length. Um, this is new extension. Um, this is old extension. This is called extension, and then um, base length. This and it would be sterling new extension. Copy. Base length over, and then copy over This is the base, which is everything up to and including the dot. Um, this is the length of that new extension. So this is the, the base, and the new thing. Allocate that plus room for the string terminator. Copy over the base part. Copy over the new extension. Um, and then zero terminate it. Um, test one ion seek. Um, so we got the extension. This is what is it? Test one dot. So test one is five. Dot is six. Um, this should be one. This should be uh, seven. So let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> looks reasonable. Um, Um, what was it? C path. So it's next. So it's C. And if we've gotten this far, let's let's write to the C thing. Right, gen buff, buff on salt. It's called the C code. Okay, C code, all this crap, the C path, test one dot C, and we go in here, yay, Let's see if that actually got written. All right, there we go.
Am I using Sturdoop? I thought I ended up doing Malloc. No, I didn't use Sturdoop. Someone's saying I should use WB and write as well. I don't think so, because when you write it out, you want to use the native, uh, you want to use, you want to do translations from new lines to whatever the native uh, text file encoding is. So if I left that out, actually I can show you. Um, so, so most Windows text editors are fine about it, but like, um, if you're if you're some sort of psychopath who uses uh, TextPad, Notepad rather, so this looks fine, right? I think if I change this to uh, If I change this to WB, I think Notepad is going to have a conniption. Yep. <laughs> so that's. I mean, it. I guess it depends on what you want. But normally, I mean, like a normal. If you're working with text files, is there, like. Obviously, it's kind of annoying in source control, but don't. I think all the. I mean, Git has by default has proper line handling conversion, right? When you check out and check in on different platforms, as far as I know. Um, but yeah, but I'm curious what would people. But yeah, like normally I would do this if you're working with text files. I think that's the right option. But uh, if someone has a. Um, has information to the contrary, feel free to share. All right, um, so where were we? Right, so now we actually generate all this stuff. Let's see here. All right, um, it might be fun to write a um, take if we take something like this sure um, I was thinking that uh, maybe what we want to do um, let's see I was thinking, let's see if I remember that syntax. I, w I was thinking that I would basically use a template generator um, to, what's the syntax? Let me see if I remember that. Is this the one I'm thinking of? Python these days has so many weird template things. Right, so maybe this is what I want. Um, So if I do, if I have some template like this, and I do 42, that should make some kind of a consistent substitution for those suffixes. So let's see if that works. Do I have Python here? I thought I did. One moment. I 
Ugh, I don't want to lose Condo for this. Um, I have way too many MSYS installations on this system. I should have Python here. Gods. wait for that to install but yeah so my, my, my plan is basically um, let's see the, the plan is basically I want to generate like a, a test case where I use this kind of template and I can just generate a bunch of sequential numbering instances of it and generate like a hundred megabyte file or something like that and uh, see whether see how fast it is it's probably going to be very slow But that was one of the first things I was planning on doing with us, is just so we can generate these sorts of torture tests, and then I want to use them to optimize stuff. Of course, this is a very simple test case, but whatever. All right, we can do it. Do we want to focus heavily on optimization in the C version since, we'll, since we will revite it eventually? Yeah, I mean, the ION version is not going to be any different, basically. Like, it's going to be the same. So anything that will make it faster slow in one version will make it faster slow in the other version. Um, all right, so. I mean, it, part of the reason I want to do the optimization is not like I'm going to optimize everything to the hilt. I just want to have something to actually properly stimulate the code, like do something um, that simulates a fairly large program just to show up where the obvious bottlenecks are. Like right now we have really large AST nodes, but they're very linearly laid out in memory, but I'm not quite sure how bad the traversal of that is hurting and stuff like that. So I just want to get basically a picture of that kind of thing. All right. Um, unexpected, blah, 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 in field name. Oh, I guess the problem, the problem is it interprets the language's own curly braces as being a problem. Uh, okay, let's use regular expressions instead. Um, that's a good one. Um, let's do something weird like this. sub um, re sub template placement 42 oh no so well Okay, let's use that. It's the shortcut control all that there. Um,
Okay, that works. I guess if I have more of them, it works as well. Okay. Um, so a really dumb would be to take a bunch of these and re sub. So that is, I guess, it's, eh, not that large, but. Um, actually, let me, do we have GCC? Let me try to, I haven't compiled this with uh, MSYS's GCC, so let's try that as well. slow. Um, I think right now our test at a different time. Let's clean that up for now so it doesn't interfere. Um, I mean this is like super poor man's. So that straight up doesn't work. Um, did we change that? Okay, that reminds me. Let's do proper line based error reporting while we're at it. This is another thing I need to do for the bunch of now we're doing things with um, things with files. So I don't think I mentioned this, but I added some very basic, is it start line, point start? I added some very basic line number tracking a while back. I don't think I commented on it, but it's not really being used. But uh, so right now, when you're skipping uh, new lines, it's going to track the beginning of the line and also increment the line number. You can use that to calculate columns if you want. Um, So for syntax errors in particular, um, let's at least just add the line number. Honestly, this kind of thing should be probably not in common, but somewhere in the lexer. Um, this probably shouldn't be size. Uh, okay, it's just like that. All right, um, okay, line one. Expected declaration keyword got funk. That's weird because funk is a declaration keyword. Um,
Wait, what? Oh, that is right. Um, so it's it's saying it's a name, but it's not detecting it as a keyword. Some weird regression. Should be a func keyword, right? Oh, we have to do init keywords. We did not init keywords. And oh, this is when we accidentally remove the lexer test, I guess. Um, let's just put this at the top. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, I think I know where that is. Right, so this is another implicit assumption. Um, well, you know what? And I also need to make my arena larger because I had intentionally been running with a small arena just to make sure we hit the growth case enough. But um, basically, previously, it was implicitly assuming because it gets allocated the first time you use it. Actually, let me, I think it, the test is, was just written wrong now that I think about it. Um, I think the test should have been like this. So let's just erase test.c and rerun to make sure it does the right thing. And let us now actually let's switch away from this stuff. some other driver here. If arc C is less than two, um,
probably generate something slightly less ambitious. Fatal undeclared name T. We should. Um, all right, let's also um, so we have we have we have these lines start. Um, Source name, I don't know. It's called source name. Um, Um, yeah, okay. Init stream replaced with init stream string. Official in it thing. Uh. Continue with that. So let's have these two things. Line number, let's call that source line. Let's not make it a freaking size T. Um, Fatal syntax error. I'm trying to remember what's the okay, so now we have that. Let's just make sure this the old stuff still runs. If we introduce an error, like strut. Oh, that's not the right one. So then we also have to set that. Okay. Um, so, okay, that looks reasonable. And now. Let's also go to the AST. 
and um, let's add a struct called source loc, which has a, has a name and a line. Um, And then for all of these functions, um, Okay, and then I think, so in the parser right now, we're doing this stuff, which is fine because it's using those locations, but then um, we want to start in the resolver. Anytime we're doing errors now, we want to provide a source location from an AST node. Um, So some of these don't have enough context. Um, oh, they don't resolve error. Um, I don't know. It's just another version of that. Maybe a better way to do it later. How are we doing on time? All right, 10 minutes. Should probably be centralized, um, to be honest. Um, using fatal. Tax. Um, this is called resolve error. And so you want to do something like this. bit lazy. Um, that's right.
I should use like the, the printf style generic versions of these, but this is just uh, for now because I want to get this done before the stream ends. Uh, so I think, let's see if that still works. Probably doesn't belong in this file, but I'm going to put it here anyway. Okay. So that still all works. Um, and now I want to, what was it? Resolve error source loc. Not even syntax error, let's just call it uh, error. Um, then in the resolver, um, I mean, yeah, let's let's do something like this: error, and then type spec look. So let's try uh, manually making an error of that sort. Right, so that still has that intentional typo. So this is good. And then, so if we write something like ought, we should get that undeclared name ought. So that I guess was not quite the same thing. Another way we could have this work is that you call certain functions to set scoped locations based on the AST node, and that way we don't have to pass it down to these sort of functions that don't necessarily want to get that context as a parameter. But um, for now, I just want to verify that. What was it? Error. Oh, right. So the thing you want to do is okay i disconnected as well good stuff um, rather than int all right it looks like it reconnected Okay, let's see. So I guess the thing I should have done is it should, it should denote a legal name, but it should be something like this. All right, looks like we're back. Yeah, let's see if this works. Okay, segmentation fault. So it got the right line. I think the problem, oh, right, I should, I don't fatal out. Um, so for now, let's do a version like this, which is these names are getting overloaded. It shouldn't be, yeah. There's something called error and an error fatal error and something called error. This is all a mess. Um, but anyway, 
let's see. Okay, so that works. Um, I should stop the Q&A now, um, but I'm going to keep going in an extra stream. This is not very interesting code, but I just this was stuff that was uh, needed to be paid off. All right. Um, oh yeah, someone noted in my uh, template code. Oh, that's why the template stuff wasn't working. There you go. All right. So let's actually see then if if that was the only thing that was preventing the tester not working. Let's see if that works. Undeclared name T. Oh yeah, there's a few other cases. Let's see what else. Only the top level names need to be renamed. Um, Okay, that worked. Let's try something big. Bigger. Okay, so that's really slow. That would be a good one to optimize on. That's only half a meg, roughly. Um, and it's quite slow. But yeah. It's a big one. At least it works, kind of. It's only 50,000 lines. But yeah, that's still. It's, yeah, that's very slow. <coughs> so, but let's see how slow the compiler is to compile the, the C code without optimizations. Again, that's not even the full linking. So it's still about 10 times slower, which is depressing, um, without any pound includes. That's really odd. Anyway, all right, yeah, so the test script works as well. Let me look at questions. Then I'll resume coding after. Um, boom, boom, boom. Path is declared but not used. Let's see. Did I get disconnected again? No, it looks like I'm back. Someone was saying that path is declared but not used. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, how fast? I think the, the the thing I was running was with optimizations, which is not very fast. Um, I mean, it's at least ten times faster than the than the the back end flow for the C compiler and linker, but that's still way slower than it should be. That's only for um, for 650k. No, you're right. I mean, a lot of this is going to be for obvious reasons, like the hash table interning being all linear searches. But that's exactly the yeah. I mean, that's why I wanted to do this test because I mean, I can make it bigger, but the problem is it's n squared, right? But I mean, maybe if people like to see n squared behavior, um, we can try it. Uh, well, not not. Uh, a thousand times bigger because it's n squared, but uh, let's say ten times bigger or sixteen times bigger. But the 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 fact that it has to search the th the main thing we're growing here is the number of top level symbols, and so every time it has to resolve a name, it has to search through all of them, um, and so overall it's going to be n squared in the length of the program. But um, if people like seeing n squared behavior, let's let's see it. So this is now. A little more than a meg, I suppose. Or actually 10 megs. This is going to take forever, but I'm happy to show that. No, it's not a disk thing. It's just the, yeah, it's, it's, it, 
I'll do the hash table interning on the extra stream. I'll start that right after we, we do the cutoff for the main stream. But this is going to take forever because it's 16 times bigger. So you would expect, I mean, you, it, it's not quite that simple because there's other things that take time, but you'd expect it to be roughly 256 times slower. Um, even though we only increased it by 16x. But actually, I'll let it run in the background, and then we can sort of see if that math uh, is, is close or not while I answer questions. But yeah, I mean, this is a this is kind of what, why I wanted to do the test, because it, it's not so fun to... I mean, it, certainly going from quadratic to linear time is always good. Someone's asking, where in the code is n squared? It's because we're doing linear searches every time we do a symbol lookup. So each lookup is linear time, but if there's n symbol uh, uses, and there are, then it's n squared overall. So yeah, it's mainly the interning, but it's actually not just the interning, it's also the uh, symbol table. So both the interning and the symbol table are based on linear searches right now. Both of those need to be hash tables. So, but that was all intentional. I mean, there was no surprises. Like this thing is linear time. Um, in fact, linear time, not just in the number of strings, but in the amount of string characters total. Uh, well, actually, I guess it filters by length, so it, it should be pretty effective at filtering it. But because it's because most of the identifiers are the same length, it's it's still well anyway. It's it's still n squared overall. Uh, and the simple table is the same thing right now. Like if you look at simget, it's just using a linear search. Uh, this local sims is always going to be linear because it's a small number of symbols. Uh, from like local function scopes, but this this thing up here is really slow, and that was always known. So that's going to get fixed when I do the hash table in the extra stream. Oh, someone wants to see it in the profiler. We can do that. Yeah. All right. So let's see. It finished. What did I say? I said 256 times slower. Right. It was 0.3 seconds before. Um, so 0 0.3 times 256 versus um, minus, uh, I guess, 83. So that was pretty close. Divided by 83 to get the relative error. Yeah, so that's like 7% error from my n squared estimate. <clears throat> now we'll, we'll be doing optimization today. I don't think it's premature optimization because we'll want to do it eventually and I just want to get it over with so I don't have to keep making excuses for the linear searches and it's pretty quick to do so. And it's the kind of code I feel like doing today because um, there's still some stuff I'm thinking about in the resolver that I want to change before we work more on the generator. And so this is a good excuse to just do a full pass on all that stuff. So uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm gonna stop recording and then immediately restart recording and start working on that. And we'll actually, um, yeah, first thing we will look at in the extra stream is to look at it in the profiler, if people want to see that. <clears throat>